Hi everyone, how are you doing? So, for those of you new to the channel, I am Elizabeth, I'm a marine biologist and on YouTube I share lots of marine related things, whether that's through art like today's video or we go exploring and go rock pooling and just celebrate the wonders of our ocean. And um, as part of a celebration, I have done my own prompt list for um, a challenge called Inktober where you draw every day in October and I've kind of changed that and made it into this thing called Rock Polaroid and I'm painting a Polaroid picture of a rock pool creature every day in October and this is kind of part two of the time lapses of me drawing them and I'm just gonna you know have a little chin wag with you while I uh, show you the footage of me painting this week and I'm going to drop in some facts about some species as well. So this is a breadcrumb sponge which is found a lot in the UK and I'm actually really happy with this um, painting. I found it really difficult for quite a while because it's just you know a blob and trying to make a blob look like a blob is actually surprisingly harder than you think but honestly I think this came out really well and it genuinely looks like a sponge and um, it's really really awesome but from one like really bizarre creature to one very well known creature I really enjoyed drawing this octopus and I've got him climbing out of the rock Polaroid because octopuses are extremely clever they are one of the most cleverest creatures on this entire planet and the way that humans tend to test intelligence of um, I suppose other animals is they give them a lots of series of tests and octopuses are renowned for being able to escape almost anything mazes bottles all of this different crazy stuff and they're just so intelligent that I thought you know what even as a painted octopus there is no way that this octopus would ever you know stay within the Polaroid and um, I haven't actually seen an octopus in real life yet, it's something that I've been hunting for. They're very rare in the UK for sightings, um, there's definitely, I think mainly it's rare for sightings because they are so intelligent and they can camouflage completely with the background, really good at disguising themselves, so you're only really going to see them if they want you to see them that's part of the problem with being able to spot them and this is a curled octopus so his tentacles at the end all curl up and that's a feature of the curled octopus not all octopus have that um super curled ends to their uh, to their tentacles or arms i should say they're not um they're not actually technically tentacles octopuses actually have arms instead of tentacles there is a difference and off the top of my head i can't remember it so i'll uh <laughs> I'll uh, get you guys to Google that. How informative of a marine biology YouTube channel. I've mentioned it somewhere before and I'm gonna do a video properly on octopuses, so um, I'll, uh, I'll include that fact later on. This was a day of elasmobranchs and what I love about this challenge is that it's kind of introducing people into maybe some of the more marine biological terms for species that you'll know already and elasmobranchs are sharks and rays because they're actually different to fish and uh, the main difference is that their entire body is made up without any bones and there's no bones in sharks or rays. In fact, they're just made up with the cartilage, which is the same stuff that our ears are made out of. So pretty wi wiggly and um, that's kind of the main feature of an elasma rank. And it's nice to kind of, I suppose, teach just a little bit more about the terminology and lots of people were like, oh, I don't know what Elasma Brank is and were quite surprised that that day they got to draw a lovely shark or ray and it was great to see the great choices that people are picking. If you want to follow along, the hashtag is Rock Polaroid. So if you search for that on Twitter or Instagram, then that is going to pop up and show everyone's amazing entries. Or just head along and follow me on at Marine Mumbles on Instagram or Twitter. And uh, I'm sharing everyone's art posts on there as well. It's been a great and fantastic community and there's still a week left. So if you want to jump in and join in for the last bit, then please do. And you'll find the prompt list of the upcoming things this week in um yeah on my social medias now i am probably most proud of this painting i don't know why it came out so well but i just really really happy with it and it's a seaweed that i love so much and it's called red rags and normally red seaweed is fine and delicate and all of red seaweeds are just genuinely gorgeous but this is really striking and it always just brings a smile to my face it's this massive like pop art of colour, it's like a pop art piece on the rocky shore and I just really wanted to kind of try and capture that vibrant nature of it and the reason I think it is more vibrant is that it's kind of opaque, you can't see through it, it's quite thick 
and um, yeah it's just really really vibrant and I, and I loved it so much and I'm really happy with how it came out and this next prompt was big crabs and in the UK we are lucky enough to be able to find spider crabs and finding spider crabs while rock pooling and recently I had an incredible trip down to the lower shore which I'll link up here and I just found these amazing fish and these amazing giant crabs and it was because it was a um, it was a, a super low spring tide I think actually on that day the tide was like it's normally measured by meters and it was actually in the minuses which I'm not entirely sure how that was possible but it was perfect conditions and um, it basically meant you could just walk in the sea and you found all these creatures that potentially don't often come up onto the rocky shore and this uh, spider crab which was covered in lots of different um, seaweeds to try and help camouflage it so it was a great you know a great spot I managed to to spot it moving and it was really really good and compared to normal crabs spider crabs can get absolutely huge this this probably doesn't get more than I think it's 15 to about 30 centimeters big but compared to all the other little crabs you've got running around the rocky shore it definitely stands out as a much bigger spider crab and this isn't even the biggest spider crab species you can find in the UK in fact it's quite small but it was just a wonderful find and I'm trying to draw as many of the creatures as possible from my own photos or species that I have found because I like the connection that it makes but also um, you know I, I like drawing on my own photographic references and if you guys want to use my photos as references too you can head over to www.marinemumbles.com where I have hundreds of photos of UK rock pooling species all sorted in a lovely nice very visual species list for you to sort through and to find some species that you want to draw so um, yeah head go and check that out if you're if you're looking for some inspiration this next painting um, was of a green leaf was for eggs and it, I picked a green leaf worm egg and it turned out it wasn't even the green leaf worm egg because I actually have a video of this being drawn from another species uh, being laid by another species and it was great because just this connection of me drawing it mean, meant I realized that I saw a different species to the what is you know usually thought that they laid these eggs and then um, it just opened up a really interesting marine discussion which I was which I was really pleased about. I love how all the fancy art YouTubers have these gorgeous desks and they always have potted plants and they have all these amazing shots. Well, when it comes to you being, you know, a, a scientist and a marine YouTuber and my daytime is spent doing the PhD and this is, you know, something that I'm doing uh, late at night, the desk just gets messier and messier as I'm watching this video. I've got my ID book to help with the ID of the green leaf one that was the, <laughs> the day before still on the desk and lots of washi tape which is being covered and pens and laptops and pencils and... <laughs> You know, sometimes you just don't have the time to uh, put into making it look wonderful. <laughs> but, uh, but there we go. This is uh, a worm. And I picked this one because it's. Uh, I love the fact that worms are able to form a entirely hard shell. It's so opposite to what we think of, you know, as wiggly worms. They form this really, really hard tube but have these delicate, gorgeous uh, feeding appendages. And I really wanted to, to draw that. So, as most of you know, or probably everyone knows, that uh, 2020 has been full of lots of time um, in lockdown. And one of the great benefits of this lockdown, though, uh, one of the few benefits, has been, uh, I think, a great accessibility to learning about different things online, in that there's been a lot more talks by different people that... Uh, and science festivals going online and things like that that you wouldn't be able to see unless you physically went to a talk by that person you know at that specific place and so being up in Scotland um, I don't often get chance to go down to Devon and this I found out about this Devonshire Cup coral that you could get corals in the UK by listening to one of the talks put on um, by some rock poolers um, and wildlife trust down in Devon and that was a real highlight for me in lockdown I couldn't go rock pooling myself but listening to these talks was amazing so I wanted to make sure I painted that because it was just a, an amazing um, yeah an amazing talk to listen to and it really inspired me and this uh, paint this seal was actually drawn from picture taken from um, uh, Joe's Ocean Media which I will link uh, down below so that you can go check uh, her out she's a really good uh, diver down um, in the south of 
coast I think it's Devon or somewhere near there and she has incredible incredible photos so you should go and check her out and she kindly let me draw this very cute seal from one of her um, dives and she's also taking part in rock Polaroid but uh, photographs rather than um, rather than um, uh, artwork but it's just incredible to see her incredible photography and I'm, I'm really having fun uh, seeing them too and this is a type of juvenile flatfish it's surprising this year i haven't seen that many juvenile flatfish i usually find loads of them um, and last year i found you know hundreds of them and i've only found two or three this year which is surprising um, and i wonder if they'll pick back up again next year whether it's a uh, you know just a random trend but they're really difficult to id especially juvenile flatfish because they are no bigger than you know a a 2p coin at this size but this species you can tell apart because it has these white dots on its fins um, and evenly spaced out and it's, uh, it's a solar net and it's just one of the only species you can kind of ID perfectly just with a glance um, so I thought I would paint that because uh, it was the easiest for, <laughs> for me to paint and get the ID right and finally we're ending uh, this week off with a nudibranch which are sea slugs they are delicate they are amazing i highly recommend checking out this video which is the video where i first found uh, a nudibranch and it was in fact this very nudibranch that i'm painting now it was an incredible experience it was so so gorgeous and so wonderful and uh, i'm not even sure my painting does it justice it should do because that's what paintings are there for but <laughs> i'm not sure i captured it quite as well as i wanted to, or quite as well as it deserved because maybe the video footage just can't be beaten because it's so cute and so adorable and so delicate and I can't believe that this little delicate creature survives in the rough Scottish seas but it does and uh, it's just wonderful. So that was kind of my painting for this week, that's what I've been up to in my evenings. We've got another week left, I'm excited to see what everyone else is posting and let me know in the comments below. Um, what you're excited to see which is your favorite and if you like these kind of more arty videos have a great week